Hi, good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of our Justice and Pieces guest speaker series. Uh, today, we have a pair of guests who are going to talk to you uh, about their journey there as well as their organization, Lawyered. Uh, so first of all, we have Jeshin, who is joining us. Hello. Hi, I'm Jeshin. Nice and, to meet you. Uh, and we have Ardina as well from Lawyered. Hello, everyone. Perfect. So maybe we could start. Uh, let's start with you, Jeshin. You could tell us a little bit about yourself and your interest in law and uh, what you're up to. And, uh, and and then we can go over to Ardina after. Yeah, for sure. So um, I'm a third year business law student at the University of Waterloo, um, and I'm the founder and managing director of Lawyered. Um, I think my interest in law specifically align with like corporate law, tech law, um, anything to do with that kind of stuff. Um, and the whole purpose of Lawyered, I suppose, was to give students a platform where they could explore their interests before making a lifelong commitment to something that's as big as, you know, the legal industry. And Ardina, how about, how about yourself? Yeah, so I am a, I'm going into my second year of the Integrated Business and Humanities program at McMaster University. Mm -hmm. And I initially started out as a writer at Lawyered. Um, but eventually I became the director of our audio articles and soon our podcasts. And what really um, draws me to the law is my passion in life is making a difference um, and trying to improve the lives of other people. And I think that lawyers um, have a lot of power in being able to do that as opposed um, to someone in other professions who have very limited tools. And I believe that the law will eventually be our answer to a lot of the problems we have in society and in fixing those. And I'm very grateful to lawyers to be able to um, look into and research um, these types of issues and topics as well as just kind of working with other like-minded people um, who have a lot of different and unique passions that we can all really work together um, and create some really interesting and unique content. Perfect. Uh, so I know you've touched there as well, both of you on lawyers. So maybe we can start you, with you, Jishin. Uh, you could tell us a bit about where this came from. I understand you're just celebrating one year. Uh, so congratulations on a year of doing it. And maybe you could tell us a little bit of the background when you founded it, uh, what kind of gave you the idea and uh, what are, you know, if you, if you were able to summarize what you do with Lawyered uh, uh, for everyone listening, what, what resources are available and what they can benefit from. Right, for sure. Um, so Lawyered actually started out of the university assignment. I wanted to submit one of my own um, law essays to a legal journal, uh, but because I'm not a law student or a legal professional, I really didn't have that opportunity because, you know, there's those prerequisites. At that point, I'm like, well, just because I'm a student doesn't mean my voice should not be heard. Considering that we are the next generation of lawyers, I think it's imperative that our voice does indeed get heard. Um, and so that's when Lloyd was started in August 2020. And you're absolutely right. We just hit a, a year uh, of Lloyd, which is super exciting. But since then, we've kind of grown to becoming the one-stop shop for all things law related. Uh, so we cover things like mentoring. We cover things like interviews with legal professionals. We have a job search engine that specifically has jobs for, you know, aspiring lawyers. So any legal jobs that we can find out there. Um, we have articles, of course, among other things. Um, we're located in three countries. So we're in Canada, the United Kingdom, and Australia, all going very well. And we have over 100 members. And like I said before, yeah, the purpose is so that, you know, students can get all the help they need before entering a very, very daunting industry. Ardina, how did you kind of find, found a lawyer as well as you know, the, you know, you started writing and, and now hopefully you're moving into more audio based and, and podcast uh, down the road there. So perhaps we could tell a little bit about how you found it and, and kind of what are some of the things you are working on as part of the organization? Yeah, so like um, Sean said, um, I was looking for a way to have my voice heard in kind of the area of the law, which is very difficult for undergrad law students. Um, as well as just to kind of, like you said, dip my toes into it, see if it's something I'm really interested in. So I came across it. And the first thing that set it apart from other like undergraduate like law clubs or pre-law societies is that you have a lot of freedom. And there's like this sense of entrepreneurship that you can really grow and try different skills within the um, organization. So like I said, I started out as a writer. Um, that was That is something I'm very passionate about in general. But later on, I know that podcasts are becoming increasingly popular as well as audiobooks. 
So that was something I really wanted to bring to lawyer just to make it more accessible to people. Um, and as well, just give some um, a different way to interact with the articles. Um, and we're hoping to expand that very shortly with the podcast as well. So instead of just hearing um, the article spoken verbatim and engaging with it, we're able to have even deeper conversations into that and really expand the content we touch upon. Now, uh, perhaps in terms of let's, I know you've touched on a number of areas there. Maybe if uh, an undergraduate student is listening and they're saying, hey, I, I want to know more about resources to prepare me for law school or just the legal industry in general. Um, and I think certainly you know, many moons ago when I was an undergraduate student at also the University of Waterloo, um, though we didn't essay, I mean, we barely had like uh, the, the internet was really just starting to boom there. But uh, in terms of you know, what what can you share with them in terms of what is available with the lawyered and what are you hoping to have uh, and what can they benefit from if they are, you know, whether they're in their first, second, third year, or even their fourth year getting ready for a path towards law school, what are some of the resources that they can benefit from having? Um, so I think our biggest one would be exposure to a global community of students all working towards the same thing. Because I know before Lloyd was started, like you have university clubs and like small just organizations that, um, teach you about the law at a very small microscopic level. And so with Lloyd, I think we really wanted to explore, you know, give students the opportunity to explore law at a broader scale. Like law isn't just in one small area. And so that's obviously our biggest, I suppose, selling point. But there are other resources, I suppose, more intrinsic resources in the sense that, so when you're submitting an article or when you're, when you're you know, working on a project for Lloyd, there are deadlines that we try to like, there, there's a format, there's a deadline that we try to mimic in terms of the rigor and the intensity that, hey, you have to do this. And there is like, you know, certain success metrics that you have to hit before any of your work ever gets published. And so I feel like when you have that opportunity to do that in a less daunting way, it becomes a lot more easier. But then obviously through our partnerships with like other organizations, um, for example, yeah, with 180 Degrees Consulting, we have legal consulting, right? So I think one of the biggest goals for Laureate was also to expose students to other pathways within the legal industry. So like you can become a legal consultant or you can become a paralegal or something like that. So these are all things, and through our events as well, these are all things that we wanna show them that this is what's available in the market. You don't have to settle down for like, you know, what's most known like criminal law or corporate law. And Adina, what are some of the things you were writing about in terms of let's maybe look at some of the articles and things that are shared there uh, on Lawyer? Uh, what were you kind of focusing on your writing or was it just a bunch of different things? And then what are you looking to kind of bring in on, to, on the audio side then, uh, whether it's uh, guests, I suppose, on, on a podcast there, or uh, are you looking at kind of uh, having audio sort of, uh, you know, you're mentioning audio books in terms of some of those articles and kind of, uh, I don't know if the word is transcribed for 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 audio, but uh, whatever the equivalent would be, uh, what are you looking to to do in that role? Um, so for the writing, um, for me, that's just personally being able to explore topics that I'm really interested in, especially in terms of human rights law and environmental law. I'm um, just kind of digging in deeper to look at some things that maybe um, the general population doesn't know about the way that things are in those sectors, and kind of bringing light to important topics that I think need to be talked about. And in terms of the like audio side, um, so what we have right now and what we're continuously working on is every time a general article is released, we also work to very shortly have the audio, audio article version of it released, which is like the verbatim, just the article so that people can listen to it as opposed to just reading it, which I think is especially valuable in today's very busy, busy life. Not everyone wants to sit down and read, especially if you're a student and your brain is already on all day, it's just nice to listen to certain topics and be able to kind of subconsciously gather that information as opposed to having to really focus on it. And then the other thing that we are working on doing um, that is almost finished with the first portion of it, um, we are going to do a podcast based on the article. So what it's going to be is we are going to have um, law students or people with a little bit more experience in the law not just undergraduate students, have a conversation with the writers of some of these articles where they explore um, the topics and subjects in a little bit of a, a deeper sense to uh, put a little bit more um, critical perspective towards it so that 
the article's discussion is not just stopped by the time you read the conclusion, it continues on. Um, so you can really um, hear what other people are thinking about it and also um, more freely come up with your own thoughts because you're hearing um, what others have to think about it and just kind of extending the discussion that we want to bring in these articles. Perfect. Now, since it's been one year, uh, perhaps, Jeshin, you can tell us a bit about how things kind of grew from that idea you had or your assignment you had in university and, and where it is today and what's come along the way. Um, and what are your thoughts kind of on looking back a year later of, of how much you've accomplished and lawyers has accomplished since those humble beginnings? So I think I'd like to start this off by pointing out um, my article was on privacy and big data protection. Um, and I, I took a fairly unorthodox approach in that. And like, I was questioning whose data it really is. And I was like, Ooh, I'm, I'm, I'm really onto something. Uh, and so that was kind of the starting of it. And then I hit stuff that addressed like data monopolies and stuff like that. Um, but then just in terms of content, when you give people the opportunity to write, they come up with some exceptional content. So like in Australia, one of our articles was on like drug, uh, sorry, drug cryptocurrency, uh, drug crypto markets, my bad. Uh, and so we were all like, how do we feel about publishing this? And then it's obviously like free speech and it's academia. So the content that students have that they can talk about when you give them the opportunity has been exceptional. It's been so heartwarming to me. And so every time people have, you know, said that, I love working with you. I love the freedom I get. That's obviously been an icing on the cake. Um, but definitely seeing the team grow and seeing people be as committed to the cause as I am um, has been, it's been really heartwarming, I guess, is, is all I'd say about that. And, and Ardina, what, uh, you know, from your role, from, from writing there into what you're doing now and hoping to continue along uh, further with, with the audio on the podcast there, what, uh, um, what can you share from, from being involved with the organization that you've learned uh, from being a part of it for this period of time? Um, well, one of the most distinct things was kind of something Sean touched on a little bit earlier. When you're in any organization or even in school, you learn a lot from the material you're exposed to. Like I've learned a lot from working with the writers and editors and managing these new like audio articles and such. And of course, meeting um, a variety of different deadlines and such. But I learned a lot from the people. Reading what other people have to say, what other people have to put out, what other people's perspectives on these things are. And even when we run into um, kind of, I don't want to call them problems because I don't think that's the right word for them, but like almost like like steps that are a little bit higher or tougher to cross the solutions we come up with and the conversations that are had are really engaging and critical and I think that that's the best way to grow from something yes the general factors and parts of the organization that does help you a lot but the people you learn almost as much or even more from that which I think is absolutely valuable beyond words and uh, Jeshin, uh, I mean, I know you mentioned the 180 degrees uh, consulting there. Maybe you can tell us a little bit more about that and where that came from in, in Waterloo. Um, and uh, what are some opportunities there for students to get involved there? Right. Yeah. So I worked with them previously. I started off working with them as a finance legal manager and then grew up the ranks to finance legal director. Um, and it was always like, you know, when I was thinking about how can we really maximize exposure to what's really available in the industry, I was like, well, legal consulting is definitely there. I personally don't know, obviously at the at inception, I didn't know much about it. And so I was like, and I feel like it's important to point out here that a lot of what Lloyd has been is, I don't get what I'm doing. And so I guarantee you there's other people, there's other students who also don't understand what they're doing or they don't have a full understanding of what's going on. So maybe if we like come together and kind of figure it out all out together, um, that's one way to go about it. And that's honestly how I've done a lot of lawyered. So it's just like, hey, do you know what you're doing? And it's like, no. And I'm like, okay, well, this is something we can jump on and we can figure out. Um, and so, yeah, so going back to the legal consulting angle. Uh, we partnered with them, and so essentially how it works is any legal, any clients that they have that requires legal advice or legal consulting, they'd, they'd refer to us. Um, we'd come up with a team of individuals who'd work on the client, we'd deliver the deliverables, and that's that's about it. That's obviously one, yeah, 
I guess that's about it in terms of 180 Degrees Consulting Waterloo. Great organization to work with as well. I see a question here, and I guess we can go back to you, Jeshin, and then we'll go over to Ardina for it. Uh, uh, your achievement is quite impressive, but were there challenging times managing this organization, and how have you overcome them? Uh, does the process help boost your confidence in becoming a future lawyer? Thank you for that question. Um, well, honestly, absolutely. There have been enough challenges, but once you've had enough challenges, you you start looking at them as you know opportunities to grow because a lot of the challenges, considering that there was nothing like Lloyd, or at least at the scale at which it's operating, nothing like this existed, and I had no previous business background other than you know classroom learning. So those challenges definitely exist, but with experience and time you learn to look at those as opportunities for finding new ways to solve problems. Um, a lot of how I've kind of solved problems as well as take a step back, look at the bigger picture. And that's definitely a lesson I've learned from my parents um, and some of my friends. In terms of boosting com- confidence, absolutely. I feel like if, if, if that's what you're scared of, that hey, you're going to bump into challenges, let that not stand in your way. Those challenges will only ever help you grow. So, you know, take that under your stride and just go from there. And Ardina, uh, what would you say? Do you want me, did you, I guess you can see it uh, here. Actually, maybe you don't, you can't see it in the chat. I'll just repeat it there for you. So your achievement is quite impressive, but were there challenging times managing this organization and how have you overcome them? Does the process help boost your confidence in becoming a future lawyer? Well, I think with anything, there are challenges, but like I said, at Lawyered, I would never necessarily put like such a big word, like challenge or problem or issue in in front of them. I would say it's more of like a learning step or achievement that you have to get through that may be a little bit more difficult than others. Um, I think that I joined Lawyered as a first year student with, like Yishan said, not a lot of experience in business thus far. And the world was still very virtual. Um, this wasn't in an organization where we have yet to be together in person and really have in-person conversations face-to-face yet, although um, we try our best. Um, so there have been um, some obstacles with that for sure. But I think the number one thing is that we are able to work together and find solutions to everything because everyone is really passionate about what they're doing. And I think that that, um, solidarity with everyone and the fact that your voice is always heard is definitely a confidence booster in that sense. I think if everything was a little bit more um, autonomous per se, I think it'd be different. But because um, everybody's say is equally valued, I think that's definitely something that will help with self-esteem and confidence in the future. Um, Yeah, and to add to that, sorry, give me one second. Um, I think another thing you learn from, as Erdian I said, these obstacles is if it's an awkward conversation that gets you to your goal at the end of the day, have it. One thing that I've really learned is, you know, have that conversation, have that, just because you're nervous about what the outcome will be is not a sufficient enough reason for you to, you know, push it away. Just put yourself in that position and then who knows? Yeah, it could absolutely go wrong. It could go absolutely, like, for all you know, it's just like the worst thing ever you've done in your life. But at the same time, there's an equal opportunity that it's the most exceptional thing you've ever done in your life so don't run away from having those awkward or hard conversations if you know there is something you know brighter at the end now kind of related uh, to to that question there um now you started this in the middle of of the pandemic last year i mean certainly well we don't know if there's a middle because we don't know when it's we're fully beyond it but um how did that kind of factor in in terms of the development i mean certainly um, I don't know if you had counted on having a, a network of people in you know, the UK and Australia, I mean, or did that kind of just come up from people sending in articles or how did that kind of grow? And what was it like kind of communicating and having an organization and you know, governance and structure where, I mean, I don't know if you've ever met in person with anyone else. Uh, no, that's part of your team. Um, so first of all, there's this misconception that virtual is bad just because there isn't that face-to-face, you know, interaction, there isn't that physical touch aspect. And I agree with it to a certain extent. Being virtual opens you up to so, so many opportunities. Like, and I think that honestly factors a lot into why we are where we are in terms of our global exposure. Um, I think 
when we were starting off, it was about using personal networks, uh, making sure that the right people were at the right places at the right times. They were they had the same vision and could facilitate what I what my vision was uh, and maintain that same rigor. Um, but I think it was a lot about hey, where where are there a lot of students that want to have their voice heard? But there there just isn't that opportunity. And I'll be honest, a lot of the world is in that state right now where people want to have their voices heard but they just don't have the opportunity so if i could find like you know if i could find someone in singapore for example um who can facilitate exactly what we're doing at the, the three branches of lawyer then more than happy to go for it like if you have a plan in mind go for it i will be more than happy to provide you whatever support you need as long as we can continue delivering our goal and ardina how did you how did you find in terms of just doing uh, and certainly with audio and podcast, uh, you know, I think it's, it's, it's great. Uh, you know, obviously I've had so many people from around the world uh, on, uh, which I would have never been able to bring into my students and you know, physically in a classroom, but uh, from, from your perspective there um, doing this, you know, virtually, uh, how have you found that experience, Ardina? Well, like Jason said, there are pros and cons to everything being virtual and it's not like the worst thing on the planet as everyone may think sometimes. Um, I think that it definitely facilitates organization sometimes because everything's all in one place. You don't necessarily have to be going, running to different locations to get things done. And of course your network is opened up because you're not limited to the people that are around you. Um, sometimes communication is a little bit more difficult if there are um, technical difficulties and this sort of thing. However, I think that in terms of just getting things done, um, it's not a difficult, um, it's not a very big challenge to just organize yourself through the platforms to get people on the same page. It just takes a little bit extra effort sometimes. And I think that because everyone is really invested in what they're doing in Lawyered, they're willing to go the extra step to make things work. Now, looking at it from, from a personal side there, um, what have you learned that in your own journeys there in terms of whether you're looking at going to law school or maybe you're not or getting you know, involved maybe within legal organizations or clinics or, or what it may be, uh, what have you learned kind of from this experience that you can apply to your own journey and, and what maybe you've learned differently uh, about you know, the, the career and, and the study and the practice of law? Um, I guess we can go to Jeshin first. It would have to be discipline for me, self-discipline. Um, it would have to be like just from the perspective of and um, just from what I've heard from like students or friends in law school, I understand how exhausting it is. So the fact that I've already been putting at putting in like, you know, sleepless nights and like 10 sleepless nights in like 20 days of the month, uh, I feel like that type of rigor has already kind of set in for me. And that's on the most basic level. Um, but on a more, I suppose, I suppose, higher level, it would have to be that, uh, don't be scared, like go for it, just, just go for it. And that essentially those two would be my biggest lessons. Ardina. Um, well, I'm going to go two directions. Um, the first one in terms of like law specific things or whether it be law in general law school, I think the number one thing I've learned there is to be more critical of everything whether it's like something you're researching in the law or um, a law school you're looking to go at or this um, lifestyle that you think lawyers may have, be critical of absolutely everything. One person's experience will not be your own, nor is everything in the law black and white as some people make it seem to be. So I think this challenging ideas all the time and looking for different perspectives to really um, be able to look at everything from a really worldly view in general, I think it's a really good lesson to have so that you're not tunnel vision for everything. And I think more in general is to be more open to changing and accepting of different ideas, especially in lawyers specifically. I've had projects or plans that I thought are going to work one certain way, but then somebody else will come up with something or will start something and realize it has to go in a completely different direction. So being open to change, and I think being critical will also help with that. I'm looking for spots where you can improve in things and just um, do things in a manner that will be um, more successful and fruitful in the long run. Great. So thanks uh, for both of you for sharing there. Now, 
on that lens, one of the things, and again, comparing this to almost I feel really old saying this, that's almost 20 years ago when I was an undergrad, but uh, uh, mentorship, right? I mean, I think especially, you know, people like myself who are, uh, you know, first generation lawyers, you know, you don't have family members that were lawyers, you don't really know uh, enough unless you happen to make a connection somewhere uh, with somebody and, and certainly a lot easier today to do so. And one of the things you do have at Lawyered is you know, get a mentor. Um, can you maybe share about the importance of mentorship and, and the people that are there to provide mentorship for undergraduate students who who may be like uh, people like myself who do, who are were interested in the law, but they don't necessarily have those people that they can turn to. And um, it may not be so easy. And, and maybe you could also share in light of the fact, you know, it's remote and in a pandemic about making those connections um, and getting the mentorship that, that you would need at this stage in your legal professional journey. Yes. Yeah, so mentoring, um, I'm also a first gen law student, pre-law student. <laughs> let's be, let's be very clear here. I'm not even in law school right now. Uh, and so that meant that, you know, I've had no one at all other than the people around me that can tell me a little bit more about what the legal industry is. And like Ardina said, no one's experience is going to be yours. Um, and so with that in mind, I feel like if I were to find a mentor for myself, I'd want it to be someone I can relate to. I'd want it to be someone who's currently in law school and is going through those ups and downs daily, um, which is what the vision was. And of course, you know, all of this is back, based, uh, sorry, backed by market research. So I think for us, it was that, let's give you someone that you can easily talk to and you're not scared about, you know, openly communicating with them. Because if, for example, I was to talk to a lawyer, a big shot lawyer, and it was like, he has like a Harvard diploma on as well. And I'm here with my 120 LSAT. I'm going to be like, okay, well, is there really any hope for me in, in the legal industry? Should I just drop out now? Visit with someone who's currently in in law school and they're like yeah I've taken the outside like three times and I fully get where you're coming from so I think that was very important that you could openly communicate with someone um, and also I've had like students come in and be like you know they're from Canada and they're like hey well I want to look into going to law school in the UK but I just don't know what that process looks like which is where it helps that you have those connections so we just be like yeah I can, I'm going to refer you to one of our mentors in the UK chapter and then you can talk with them and go from go from that and then there and those I'll be honest those mentors have also definitely helped me a lot in terms of when I have questions as well so yeah I hope I hope that answers your question yeah definitely and, and certainly having those resources and um and Ardina perhaps maybe you can expand more on this but uh, I think it's great that you're saying look there's no one person who's going to have all the answers, right? It's not like, well, hey, this person's my mentor. I'm going to be exactly like them. I'm going to do everything they did. And I'm going to be in their same shoes, you no know, two years, three years from now. So uh, it's also important there to have different people, maybe in different, you know, you can have a mentor for different areas um, or multiple mem mentors there as well. Um, so Ardina, maybe you want to touch more on mentorship there and, and how that is helped to accomplish through Lawyered. Well, one of the most important things, I think, especially in law, is whatever path you've gone in life, there's a lot of unknown and insecurity. So having a mentor that can um, tell you kind of like the false from the truth, especially because you'll go and hear these horror stories about law school and the law all the time, having someone to kind of separate that and tell you, give you a general idea of what it will actually be like is highly reassuring. And I also think that everyone wants a little bit more um, kind of concrete idea of what their life would be like if they went down a certain road. And even though your life is not meant to emulate that of your mentors, having that um, idea of what it could be like and being able to kind of think about how you'd like to um, mold or kind of change the way you do things based on what they've told you, I think is really helpful as well. Having kind of like that base or groundwork to work off of if you do choose to go down that path. Perfect. Um, now, I mean, before I forget, I think certainly um, there are ways to be involved, whether it's a writer and, and, and such there with your organization. So maybe just, Sean, you can share for anyone how they can get more resources uh, or you, know, you could highlight something maybe we haven't talked about, but how can students of you know, whatever point uh, get in contact or get more involved with your organization? 
Yep. So the best way to learn more about our organization would be either to directly visit the website, which is www.lawyer.org. Um, or you can find us on all of our social medias, LinkedIn, Facebook, um, Instagram. We're also on TikTok in the UK, which is cool. Um, we're always hiring for one, one or another position. You can always like get involved. Even if you're not a full-time, I suppose, writer with us, if you have a piece that you've written for a class and you're like, the world needs to know about this, send it in to us. We will do our proofreading. We'll do our editing process and we will get it out there. We will get it to a place that, you know, you feel comfortable sharing it with the world. Um, I think the biggest thing, if you want, if you want to get involved with Lloyd is it's not enough to say that the law is outdated. I think now more than ever, if you're going to be the next generation lawyer, you need to be, you need to be playing a very active role in changing that dynamic that, you know, this is how the law has always been. And that, um, you know, it's very competitive and everything when it could really be a very collaborative industry, considering that the whole point of law is kind of maintaining peace. And now, I mean, you, you've just uh, you know, finished the first year. What's this, what are you looking forward to in terms of year two? Um, and where do you see kind of maybe more growth or more different things that you're going to hope to add in? Uh, you know, go, go to you, Jeshin, first. And then I think uh, Ardina can talk more about, uh, you know, some things like the podcast and other ideas like that. So definitely more partnerships means more, a better experience for students in general. I think just on our end, we want to continue updating and upgrading our website to a point that, you know, for me, I think the vision is when you look at Lloyd, you have, and as an undergrad student, you have that same energy or you have that same feeling that you look at a big law firm and you're like, I'm so proud to call this my own. So I think that's always been my vision for Lloyd. So I want students to feel proud of it. But yeah, so partnerships, we have more events. Um, we have more services that kind of come up in AI, hopefully. We, we're really looking into, you know, identifying what AI and law related problems we can solve. Um, and I think that's a bit on, on the more concrete side. Um, in general, we're looking to expand into whatever countries, I suppose, uh, emerging economies would be our next big thing, because I really want to understand how um, the law works there and how we can kind of pave the way for students there. So they're less afraid of what's really out there. Um, and yeah. Uh, Ardina? Um, well, Shoshan has always been really welcome and opening with any ideas you bring to her for lawyer. So I really can't wait to see what other um, kind of ideas people are bringing in that kind of entrepreneurship sense within lawyer um, to kind of keep expanding um, what we're talking about. And like Shoshan said, we're not looking to say that the law is outdated. We're looking to have those critical and deep discussions on topics that need to be talked about. So just kind of continuing that and bringing all our unique voices and perspectives onto those um, those subjects for sure. Great. Now, in terms of uh, getting ready for for law school, and and certainly, I mean, not, not everybody in undergrad that's in you know, has an interest in law is going in that route. What what have you learned in terms of um, those next steps, and and what can you maybe share with? Uh, any uh, students who are in similar paths uh, uh, about if law school is kind of the, the next step uh, uh, about what you can do to better prepare yourself for, for that next step in your journey. Can I leave it at get yourself a mentor through lawyer and they will answer all of your questions. <laughs> can I leave it at that? Um, but no, on a more serious note, of course, you know, do your research, figure out what law school is best for you on um, on various parameters like cost, like location and stuff like that, figure out what it takes to get in and just go for it. Like, even if it's like out of your reach in terms of like grade requirements or anything, go for it. And Erdina, I know you're, if you're going to your second year, right? So, I mean, maybe, um, you know, still have a, a couple few more years there of undergrad before, um, going into that direction should you want to, but what would you, would you say to add to that? I think keep every possibility open. I think that a lot of people shoot their dreams or aspirations down because they don't think they can do it. But I think that is a very, um, a voice you don't want to listen to in your head. I think that everyone is capable of whatever they can put their mind to. So if any law school or any particular, particular career or anything is something that you truly truly desire to try and do 
go for it. Don't let any kind of restrictions stop you. There's always a way to achieve something. Now, one of the things that I know, uh, Jashan, you touched on this uh, a bit about sleepless nights there and uh, being students and and balancing that and you know, the pandemic and, and lawyer and uh, all other responsibilities there. Um, one of the things we've, we've talked quite a bit with with different practitioners and, and others in the legal industry is you know, taking care of your own self and your own mental health. And what have you what, what can you share kind of for students uh, um, in terms of finding the balance? I mean, I think. You know, the last year and a half has been very unique. So it's not like you can prepare yourself for suddenly doing courses online and, and doing exams online. And um, what can you share maybe with anyone listening about what's worked for you? And again, mindful of, you know, it's a great uh, piece there that Ardina pointed out of, you know, everyone's different, but it's good to have, you know, a wide uh, you know, range of different ideas of what's worked and what, uh, um, what works for you. So in the spirit of mental health, um, I've always prided myself on being transparent about what it's been like, considering that I was in Dubai managing lawyers across three different continents. So full honesty, I'm still figuring out that work-life balance. I will not say that I, I have it all sorted out. Like I'm still working, you know, endless hours. There's been times where I've been like putting in 100-hour weeks. Um, but I think the biggest thing anyone should remember is if you're passionate about it, if you really, really love what you're doing, the time is very inconsequential. Like, I think that's 100% what's gotten me through it. If I did not love Laureate as much as I do, um, I would be exhausted and that takes you to burnout, which also I suppose segues into a good point about burnout. Um, you can love something, but you can still definitely get brain out by it. Do not like, you know, do not lie to yourself that, that's not possible because it absolutely is. You can get tired of doing what you love. So you need to give yourself breaks. You need to force yourself to take those breaks that allow your body to revitalize itself and, you know, come back with a fresh mind. Ardina? Um, like Sean said, I think that taking breaks is really important, but also just being very aware of how much energy you really have to give. Because sometimes I think we overestimate um, how many hours we truly have to put energy in throughout our days. So I think that really being honest with yourself and saying, okay, I have a lot of passions that I want to work on in life, but I'm also limited by the amount of energy I can give. So I need to prioritize that and really be honest with myself is where that energy is going and how much I allot to each section or area. Perfect. So thank you both of you for taking the time and joining us, sharing about Lawyered. And again, congratulations on your one year anniversary here. Uh, I know you've shared quite a bit there in terms of advice for undergraduate students, but uh, perhaps know if you can summarize everything into, you know, one little last uh, uh, words of wisdom here about uh, you know, your organization and what they can do and what they can gain from there, as well as uh, anyone in similar paths there. Um, any advice you have for them, any final words of wisdom. So perhaps we'll start with you again, Jashan, and uh, then we can end with Ardina. Okay, so I'll make this very, very quick. Um, look at everything as an opportunity. You're walking on the street. Um, if there's ever like, you know, if you ever see a problem, never undersell yourself uh, or never sell yourself short. Think like, I can totally solve this problem and go for it. Um, and then, like you said, you know, if you want to get involved with the legal industry, but you don't really know where to start or you're scared of doing it, Lloyd would be the best place to do it, considering we're all students and <laughs> say what you will. We're all in the same place as you would be like we're just as lost. We're all kind of figuring it out. The only benefit being we're doing it together. Perfect. And Ardina, you can have the, the final words here of wisdom. And uh, thanks again for, for joining. Um, very much like Shasan said, if you truly want something, go for it because there will always, always be a way to achieve it. And don't be afraid to take ideas that you maybe think aren't, aren't the best in the world or aren't worth it. Take those ideas forward. Like I wasn't sure if these audio articles or podcasts would be something that would be good for lawyers, but Shasan really, um, she opened it with open arms. And I think that we're really going to be able to grow that area in lawyers. Um, so yeah, go for it. If you think um, that you can truly make something out of it and you're passionate about it, you will be able to achieve it. 
Perfect. So congratulations again. And I think certainly it's great to see that there's so many resources that are being developed uh, by students for students. Uh, I think, uh, you know, again, thinking back to my second and third year of, of undergrad, uh, you know, I mean, I don't know if they still have uh, um, bomber uh, Wednesdays, I suppose, with the pandemic, but I mean, those used to be the, you know, the priority then. Uh, so it's great that, you know, already you're taking these initiatives and all of the people on your team from around the world there that are contributing. I think it's great to have resources and I uh, wish you all the best, you know, for another year and, and beyond. And hopefully again, as well in your personal journeys, whether it's going into law or something completely different, that all of these experiences help you. And thanks again for taking the time to share here with my students and everyone else listening about Lawyered and wish you all the best and enjoy your weekends and, and take care in whatever little bit of the summer we have left uh, before I guess school starts ramping up again in, in September. Take care. Thank you so much. Have a great one. Thank you. Hope you guys enjoy your weekends.